Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue, and like the sign says, we're at Tallamore. We're at Lou Guzzi's Golf Laboratory. Former National PGA Teacher of the Year, Lou Guzzi, frequent contributor to Inside Golf, and we're back here to say hello to Lou again and take a look at what he's done to his laboratory. Some major changes and renovations, some additions, all to help you become a better golfer. Let's take a look and see exactly what Lou's done. Oh my, you talk about a renovation. Lou Guzzi, what have you done to the laboratory? This is amazing. How about this? A little bit of paint, huh, Aaron? And a, you know, an awesome about golf simulator too. Wow. Takes us all over the world. I, I can see that. I'm glad you still have the fireplace. You got the holiday lights. Some things never change, but this is really really some renovation. Yeah, this is going to be exciting for 2019. Big D's in here on the seventh hole at Pebble Beach. Wow. We have it on the practice mode so he can actually work on his swing and work on the shot pattern I might right there win. at Pebble Beach. So we figured if we can't get uh, around the world, we're going to bring the world into the, the laboratory and that's what we've done. Hey, Darren, come on over here. You can always make that birdie putt. Good to see you. Darren okay, Mills see you. here at the laboratory with uh, Luke Guzzi and you two guys are going to be working a lot together up here. Darren's got something going. You always have something going. Tell us about it. Well, we started in 2010 together here at the Academy, and Darren's about to, for 2019, go into a little new venture. Why don't you tell him what you're going to be doing, because it's pretty cool, and I'm somehow going to get involved Very in this. Excited. So I started my own company, Fairways to Vineyard Golf Tours. It's a tour company that's going to specialize in pairing ultimate golf adventures with exclusive wine experiences. Wine's one of my second passions. My wife has worked in the private wine industry for 27 years, so I've been fortunate to travel the world. I'm going to combine the two passions of golf and wine, escort tour groups to wine country, uh, start domestically, and hopefully eventually go international. Cool. Sounds like we're going maybe uh, out to Sonoma Valley, or what are we going to be doing? Pebble uh, Beach. Pebble Beach. That's Monterey, a good start, Napa, right? Sonoma, San Francisco, uh, Pacific Northwest. And you'll be the guide? I will be the guide, both, both on the, the golf course and the wine. And in the vineyards. We have, to, we have to add a little scotch to this venture, too. All right. You don't want to leave Lou out, right? No. Uh, Otherwise, I'm not going. It's your go-to. But, Lou, right. uh, what was your motivation for doing this renovation? You were here for how many years with the old laboratory? That's right. We started in 2008. The building went up in 2007, towards the end of 2007. And then in 2008, we started to teach. And then, you know, over the course of time, I thought, well, a big D here was going to be going into a new venture. What can I do? to take the golf instruction to a new level. And now I can teach out of the bay and at any time flick the switch on the simulator, go anywhere in the world and do on course instruction. So we can go to St. Andrews, we can go to Whistling Straits, we can go all over the place. They can learn pre-shot routine, on course strategy, hit shots, practice, shape shots around trees. You're gonna see Harry, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in some strange spots in a Places few minutes. Places that I've been to uh, frequently. But you know, this is the ultimate I hate to say it, man golf cave. And women too, right? That's right. It's everybody's cave now. Yeah, yeah that's this for sure. This is really, really neat. And, and simulators, it's really going, you know, it's being, it's a, an evolutionary thing when they first right. started a few years ago. And now, I mean, you can get advice. We'll hear from Steve Melnick. That's right. And he'll be telling us how far the putt is, what kind yeah. of speed the greens are. And it, it's, it's great amazing. because we, we have the ability now to practice do on course instruction, enhance the teaching progress big time. And then at the same time, when you're out there, if you have the specialty shot, we can actually put it on the practice mode, have you hit shots over and over again until you get it right. That's what we're all about, getting it right. And we're here at Lou's new laboratory. I'm gonna call this Lou Guzzi 2.0. We're back with Lou Guzzi, Darren Mills at the new and renovated Laboratory at Talamore on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at MoncoGolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit TheFirstTeePhiladelphia.org. Buy the Golf Association of Philadelphia. Gap, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company. 
quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional. When I got back from the Gulf War, I was afraid to leave my house for five years. Clearview Hope and Renee Powell saved my life. When I started Clearview Hope, I wanted to do all that I could to help our nation's women military veterans. Renee, with Gulf, you have empowered all of us, and we just cannot thank you enough. The best stories end in thanks. Share your story at thankspgapro.com. This season, stay up, stay out, stay wild, stay cool, and stay together because you don't have to go far to get away. Book your stay and receive offers of up to $250 at these premier attractions. Welcome back to Inside Golf. We're at the uh, newly renovated Lou Guzzi Golf Laboratory at Talamore. Darren Mills is here with us. And of course, former PGA Teacher of the Year, Lou Guzzi. Lou, uh, all right, we saw Darren hitting a the shot there. This is a generic sort of uh, driving range, practice range. That's right. The canyon effect, I love that. But uh, this is no specific driving range or practice area at any no. famous golf course. No. It's just a, a picture that they have up there. How is this though gonna help your pupils become better golfers with all the technology that you have available here. That's right. Well, right off the bat, they can warm up so they get the atmosphere of a driving range. One of the things I do like to do, and we're going to show this to you later, is we go out to St. Andrews, the old course, and we actually can warm up on the 18th tee. How about that? With the Royal and Ancient in the background and hit golf shots because we can put it on the practice mode. And we're going to go over that in a little bit. But they warm up and then we go out, we play a couple of holes, watch pre shot routine, alignment. And alignment's a big deal. You have to line up where you want to hit the shot. We can shape shots left to right and right to left. Big D, try to hook one for us, you know, with that iron. Go ahead and make it move right to left so we can really challenge our students to see what they do. And you can see the simulator picks up the ball. On demand, a nice, yeah, little, isn't cool? uh, nice little draw there yeah. from Big D. Low, high, cuts, fades, you name it. We can do it. Tops, and, by and the way. And what helps, tops too. No, what helps tops. the simulator is, as you can see, Darren has a ball, and I'm holding one right here that is specially marked. This is what actually helps the simulator pick up the spin, That's whether right. you top the ball, whatever. Right? Yes, it's very important that we use these golf balls because the brain up there reads everything that's going on with the club and the ball. And the really cool thing about it too is we can actually change the conditions. We can make it windy. We can have wet conditions, dry conditions. We can change the time of day, morning, you know, afternoon, dusk. So we have all these different options. So if I want to work with a student on a knockdown shot, it's beautiful. We can make it windy like it is here today. And then they work on knockdown shots and it will affect the ball flight as well. All right, what do you say we move from the canyon practice area to uh, where do you want to go? You want to go across the pond? Yeah. Scotland? I do. 18th T box, uh, St. Andrews? I will take it. You us ready there. for that, Darren? Absolutely. Yeah. All, right, All well, right, let's go fly. So I'm, I'm going to take it over here. This is sort of the guts of the simulator where it all starts. That's right. We're going to get out of the range and we're going to go. We're going to take a little flight. Real we're going to go flight. across the ocean. St. Andrews. St. Andrews, Scotland. Yeah, we're going to customize this so we can actually jump into a lot of different holes, which makes it really cool. Ah, uh, the old course at St. Andrews. How about that? And we're going to customize it, Harry. We're actually going to go in here and we're going to throw up 18, but I could put 7, 13, Play whatever 18. order you want. That's absolutely right. And okay. here we can change the conditions. So it's the afternoon. We're going to go to 18 and tee off. So it's great because now I can put it in the practice mode, which is really cool because we can actually practice. And this is like an overview of the whole hole. That's right. So when they're, when they're on the golf course and they're hitting shots, we have to figure out, just like when we're out playing, what to do, the yardage, where we want to leave our second shot. It's going to show us everything just like we're there. So there it is. So then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put it on the practice mode so my students can actually hit off the teeing grounds at St. Andrews. So we're going to go in, practice mode, on. Now we're overseas. We're at St. Andrews, the old course, 
and we have it on the practice. And it's on the big top. screen, ready to go. Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to work the ball left to right, right to left, high, low, and um, take it to the next level, that's for sure. Let's see if your prized pupil, Darren Mills, is ready to tee it up on 18 at St. Andrews. Sounds good, let's Doesn't go. get any better than that, does it? All right, Darren's ready to go, but uh, before we get his little instruction, you know, besides the recreational part of coming here and being able to look and play St. Andrews, maybe you've never had that opportunity before, it is a teaching tool as well, as we're going to find out with Darren. Yes, so right now, like here's a perfect example. We have this fear of OB right, and in the golf swing, everybody's heard that you kind of feel like you hit the right field, the action coming into the ball, a good path. Big D, show them a good path coming down, just in slow motion, what that club should be doing before it enters the ball. And see how it stays behind his body a little bit? Is that I mean, the lag? Yeah, so when you think about it, right about in here as he's coming down, it looks like he's going to hit it way right. And if he doesn't release that golf club, that ball is going to go out of bounds big time. Well, the average person fears that, and then they come over the top. So what we do is now we have this great visual of 18 at St. Andrews. I just happen to have two of my little cones here. Our starting point for the ball is right here, and we're going to throw the cones over here like it's a little gate to feel like you're hitting through. And then Big D, when he makes his move coming down, he's going to feel that inside path. He's going to let it go. It's going to feel like he's hitting it to 1 or 2 o'clock or right field, but in reality, it's an inside path. Then the club goes back to the inside and around his body, hits it right down the middle. You better hit it right down the middle now. Here we go. All right, the pressure's on Darren. Never a doubt. Beautiful shot down the right-hand side of the fairway. Let's see how far this goes. Good shot. Safely inbounds, Darren. Well done. Gorgeous. The Tom Mars shot was never endangered. 100 yards coming in, 18th hole at St. Andrews. We'll be back in a moment. Darren, you're going to birdie this hole, I hope. Absolutely. Okay, we'll see. I think we're in for a birdie hole at number 18 from Darren at St. Andrews when Inside Golf continues from Lou Guzzi's restored, renovated, and certainly improved laboratory at Talamar. Stay with us. Everyone knows the five senses. But what if we told you? There's more. An elusive sensation. Coaxed out only under ideal circumstances. We can't fully describe it, but you'll know it. When you feel it. We call it the ultimate driving machine. Take advantage of exceptional lease and finance offers today. Welcome back, Inside Golf continues. We are at Lou Guzzi's laboratory, the new look laboratory for Lou Guzzi here at Talamore. And Lou's here with Darren Mills. And Darren, you saw his tee shot on number 18 on the simulator at St. Andrews. Hit it about, what, 245. That's right. Now he's got roughly 100 yards to an, an up pin. Yep. And he's going to get in there, what, uh, anywhere within 10 feet would be perfect. Well, he right? said he's going to make a birdie here, so he's got a 100-yard shot. That's to the flag, so we want to leave it a little short of 100, and I'd go right at it with a soft draw and then have that uphill putt from about 8 feet. How about okay. that? Okay, pull it off, Darren. Big D, dial it in. Even takes a divot, Harry. How about that? It knows. It's coming right down next to the hole, isn't it? All right, we've got a shot here. Let's see how close this is. All right, Darren has about eight and a half feet, Lou, for a birdie putt here at number 18. He does. The voice of Lou's simulator <laughs> is Steve Melnick. Steve's ready to tell us what kind of putt Darren has. Make it happen. This putt will come right more than a little. Also, you have a slight uphill slope here. That's right. We can put the grid system in to get an idea of what's going on. Here's Darren's putt. And you can see it's going to be uphill because these balls are moving towards his ball and a little left to right break. So the grid system here really helps us to read the green. Then we can put it back in the spectrum mode when he's ready to hit and he can knock in his birdie putt. Darren, you got all the information you need. All you got to do is step up there and make this birdie putt. Here we go, Harry. Dindy. Dindy. Right in the middle. There you go, bud. Thank you, Harry. All right, another birdie, another birdie on 18 for Darren Mills. And Lou, couldn't have asked for anything more than that, could nice you? Play. You got to love that, right? What a way to finish your round, especially at St. Andrews. There's a score on 18, one under, just like he said. Okay, now, 
in addition to what we did there, playing the hole, this thing can also put you in position to hit difficult shots. That's right. Tell so us about that. Why don't we take a little trip to Pebble Beach? I'm going to set us up on hole number seven, and then we're going to hit a variety of shots. And here is the hole that Lou was talking about, the iconic par 3 seventh at Pebble. Boy, look at that. Boy, wind makes a big difference here. It's downhill. If the wind's in your face, you could hit three iron. If you got it behind you, maybe a wedge in your hands. Yep. You're lucky today, Lou, because we don't have uh, much wind. Light breeze. How about that? Downhill, 94 yards. What are you going to do for it? Well, right now, if I have a student in here, here's the beauty of this. I'm going to hit a stock shot with my Sam wedge. So we're 94 yards. It's going to play a little downhill. So I'm going to take a, a bit off it, make the swing. So it's going to be a nice high shot going in there. You can see it moving a little bit to the right, and I'm in the sand. Oh, no. Yeah, how about that? So we got a little light breeze, five miles an hour, and it would show the sand shot. Now, the beauty of the practice mode is I can hit it again, play the wind, aim a little bit more to the left, stock shot. Looks like we got the green this time, Harry. That's a winner. And we can hit shots over and over again until we get a good feel for what we're doing. Same thing with the nine. Put a little bit more into it. Now we have a nice low shot going on to the green. The simulator has taken us to the Monterey Peninsula. Hole number 18, par five, Lou. Water to the left. How are you going to shape this tee shot? Well, I'm going to take the drive down the right-hand side for sure towards that tree that's in the middle of the fairway. I'm going to get you onto that green, Harry, and then we're going to watch you putt at Pebble Beach on 18. How Just about that? Just give me a chance to make four. All right, let me give this shot so we can get you to the green for putting. Here we go. Okay, nice and safe. There's no reason, Harry, to hit it anywhere near that water and get greedy. You're going to see from that drive right there, we're in perfect position. All right, you got 257 to the hole, Lou, and you're going to lay up, try to get it uh, within distance of a wedge or something. Like yeah, it's tempting to go for it, Harry, but I've got bunkers left and right. There's, there's just a, a thin line to try to get through, not worth it. I want to lay it back, so I'm going to hit a six iron down the right side and then come in with a fuller shot. Strategy on this hole big time. So there's our shot. A soft draw. Yeah. And then we'll see what we have left here, right in the middle of the fairway as well. 78 yards, so I can make a pretty full swing. We have a little under 80 yards to the hole. We got that tree to the right, and maybe a little left to right shot, Lou. Well, what I'm going to do, Harry, is the tree really isn't going to be a factor, because I'm going to send this a little bit left to the flag. I have a lob wedge. Let's get you set up for that birdie putt. Here we go. Get it I like tight. It, Harry. I like it. Just a little left of the hole. I think we're going to have a close one. 11 feet. How about 11 can feet? Can you do it? I think I could do it in my sleep. All right, sounds good. Well, there's your putt. Stay with us. Inside Golf continues with teed off. And I'll have a chance at a birdie on 18 at Pebble Beach. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues for teed off. Our panel today assembled here at the beautiful Blue Bell Inn, right on Skip Pack Pike in Blue Bell, Pennsylvania. The Blue Bell Inn has a lot of things planned for your holiday, maybe uh, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, they got a big thing planned. And on January 4th, right here at the Blue Bell Inn, they're going to be celebrating a monumental anniversary. What's monumental? About 275 years. For all the information, go to their website, bluebellinn.com. We have a top-notch panel for teed off back with us harry mays good longtime friend of mine member at uh, not plymouth anymore it's called 1912 1912 club making a lot of changes over there and uh, harry is also a podcaster i'm sure you've already followed him every week he puts out something new there I give you spot. my 60 best minutes of the week, man. There you go. Well, just give us five That's or six. That's all I got here. anymore. We're just looking for five or six. Quinn Spitzer, president of the Golf Association of Philadelphia, is with us. Member at Huntington Valley Country Club. Hi. How many hey. years now you've been up there? Oh, about 25. There you go. And Chris Gardner is with us from nearby Bluestone. We're just about uh, maybe a drive and a gap wedge from your office, right? Yeah, not too far. Not too yeah. far. Okay. Home game. Good to see you, Chris. Uh, Gentlemen, Rory 
McElroy has been told that if he doesn't play in a certain minimum number of tournaments this year in Europe on the European tour, he faces the possibility of never being selected as the Ryder Cup captain for Europe. Now, is that a problem for Rory McElroy? It could be. They may change the rules, Harry, when it gets to the point where they're looking for Rory to be possibly their captain. But right now, he says he's going to play not enough tournaments in Europe. He's going to concentrate in the States on the PGA Tour. Good or bad for Rory? I think it's good. It's good for golf fans of the PGA Tour. I enjoy watching him play. Uh, he needs to get back to being Rory McIlroy for four consistent rounds on the PGA Tour. He won, I believe, at Bay Hill last year. was his only victory. Hasn't won yeah. a major since 2014, the PGA. He needs to get back to being, you know, the, the $200 million man that we, that we knew from a couple of years ago. And I think this might help him do that. Quinn? Well, I don't think this will make any difference. Uh, as far as I know, the Ryder Cup captains for Europe have been selected at least through 2024. And I think 2024 is Ian Poulter. He's not as bad a guy as we all think he is. Uh, by 2024, I think it's very likely the European and, and PGA Tour will be merged. And so at that particular point, the whole calculus changes. So it may actually have no impact on him whatsoever. That sounds like breaking news. Yeah. You're predicting I don't know, that. That's my prediction. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll have to come back to that. That yeah. could be a whole topic. Chris, your so, thoughts on first Rory? I think that it's, uh, it's certainly a nice honor to have. I don't know if everyone wants to think that far down the road. I don't know how far down the road that is in Rory's career, but uh, I would say most legendary Ryder Cup players have eventually become the captain on their team. I think it is a nice honor. It's kind of a cap to your Ryder Cup career. So he's got to weigh how important that is to him. Um, but if it is only four tournaments, do we say, on the European Tour? I'm not, I'm not sure exactly. It's a Close minimal number. Four. Yeah. And one of them would be, obviously, you know, the uh, Open Championship right. would probably be included in that. Maybe the Scottish Open, I'm not sure. I would think that he could probably find a way to get four of those tournaments in. It would seem. Whatever the minimum is. So it's, it's almost like he's asking to get into trouble with the European Tour if he can't find a way to get four, four tournaments in. But I will point out that uh, Tony Jacklin, himself a, a world-class player back in the day when he won uh, both the Open Championship and also the U.S. Open, I think two years apart back in the late 60s, has come to his support. I'm talking about the Rory support by saying he wishes he had not concentrated as much during his heyday playing in Europe, that he had taken, not taken the advice of some uh, people that were guiding his career to stay in Europe and come to the States because this is where, the States being a place where he could have really honed his game and maybe won more championships. So that's been a big name in Rory's corner. Whether it will help him solidify his choice or not, I don't know, but that's pretty significant, don't you think? Well, I think it is very significant. I mean, one of the things we have to remember is Europe is really lacking for great parkland venues. So as a consequence, they have great links courses and you can really hone your links game there. But if you want to go ahead and play in the parkland courses that we play in, in here in the, uh, the PGA Tour, you just don't have as much of an opportunity. So I think Jacqueline's point is exactly right. Come over here, learn to play the different styles of golf, Go ahead and see how that improves your game, and, and you're going to be a better all-around player. Talking about the uh, unification of the two tours, whether it happens or not, I know the Ryder Cup in two years, the next time and it's back in Europe, four years that would be, it's going to be in Rome. I don't know, do you know one world-class uh, venue in Rome? I, I, I don't. I'm, I don't. What's going on with that, I wonder? Is that the whole uh, you know, European Union thing maybe, looking for... Globalization of uh, venues in golf as well as other things? Remember, they created the series to try to increase the purses in Europe. So there's the Italian Open, there's the Irish Open and the like. And so they're trying to go ahead and spread them around and they're trying to go ahead and get a lot more publicity for that particular tour, hoping to keep the players like Rory in Europe rather than having them all flee to the PGA Tour. But I think it's inevitable that's what's going to happen. I, I can see Harry Mays going to Roma for a little Ryder Cup actione, right? Yeah, no, not bad. I've never been to Europe. Podcast on the Via Veneto. Sure. Thanks for joining us for Teed Off. We'll be back more of Inside Golf in just a moment. Located in Bluebell, just a short drive from Plymouth Meeting, Bluestone Country Club offers a setting that's close at hand but feels like a world away. Bluestone offers a championship caliber golf course, practice facilities including a large driving range, separate chipping and putting areas, and a staff of PGA professionals. At the Country House at Bluestone, you'll find excellent food, superb service, and an outstanding setting. Their expert staff will assist in planning your next event, whether it's a wedding or simply a lunch and dinner or cocktail party. 
Check out Bluestone's variety of membership options. Much more than a golf course, Bluestone is a community. Everyone is looking for something. Consistency. Quality. Peace of mind. Found. The Haverford Trust Company. That looks good, Harry. Oh, Bingo. <laughs> easy game, isn't it? Huh? There it is, Harry. Thanks for the tips. Boy, what a great view of this course, Pebble Beach, and all the other ones. And you also have like an ability to put on the simulator, you know, the short game areas. Right? That's right. Yeah, we can work on our chipping, pitching, pretty much everything. And Lou Guzzi's lab is open to anyone who wants to come here, not just Talamore members. That's right. Just go onto the website, and then you can book your lesson, get right into the scheduling program, and get into this building to play better golf. And have a lot of fun doing it. Lou, thanks. As thanks, always, Good to see you. Teacher of the Year, and he's right here at the Lou Guzzi Laboratory located in Talamore. That's it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. Get indoors with Lou and have some fun. I'm Harry Donahue. See you next time on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at MoncoGolf.com. Buy the First Tee of Philadelphia. The First Tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit TheFirstTeePhiladelphia.org. Buy the Golf Association of Philadelphia. Gap, celebrating amateur golf, since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company, quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professionals.